hello guys welcome to security red versus blue team channel so in this video we will be discussing on another functionality of nasus that is nasus compliance audit scan so in our previous video we discussed on uh, nasus vulnerability scanning so uh, if any of you have not watched the video the link will be in the description and the icon below uh, so please do uh, watch up the video for uh, more details on how to perform the vulnerability scan so in this video let's start the compliance audit scan so we are just logging into uh, the local version of uh, nasus so um, as we discussed in our previous video so before starting for any uh, compliance added scan or vulnerability scan so we just move to uh, we just go to the policies then configure the new policy so i'm just clicking on policy section and then uh, click on the new policy button so once you click on the new policy button um, we have options for discovery scan vulnerability scan and then compliance audit scan so in this compliance audit scan by default nasus has some of the functionalities however uh, these things were not available for the um, the free version of the software so if any of you have using uh, the, the paid version in your corporate then uh, you can uh, use any of the required uh, the compliance uh, policies so if you look at it, uh, we have audit uh, cloud infra uh, compliant scan and we have PCS scan and we have MDM config, offline config. So out of all these, um, uh, the compliant scans, uh, the compliant policies. So the, the, the most frequently used, uh, the general, uh, the compliant policy is that is the policy compliance auditing. So the moment we click on the, uh, the policy compliance audit scan, as we are using the the, the non-paid version so we won't be able to view the details so majorly um, the ones we have if anyone have the access to this one so the there will be uh, two sections in in default um, so we'll just uh, pick the one uh, from the advanced scan and we'll just explain it from here so uh, we have um, so so in the in the compliance scan we have these settings by default all the options will be same and we have the credentials as well so instead of plugins we have the compliance so in this compliance so we will be selecting two things uh one is uh, um, uh, um, if, if it is a windows machine we will select a windows compliance so for every compliance there will be a level one and level two uh compliance so it, it is basically is like uh so when you when we say level one so level the, the the aim of the level one is to mainly to lower the attack surface of the organization while keeping the systems running and not hampering the business functionality so when it comes to level two it is like increasing the security level little more it's like a considering defense in depth and uh um, where uh, security is a paramount, like security is the most important than anything else. So, uh, so we, we it's, uh, it's not, need not necessary that we need to select uh, both the things. Uh, so by default, uh, the the people will perform both level one and level two. So, um, so when when we have this uh, the compliance section. Uh, and under the policies so there we have a flexibility to select uh, the cas level one um, um, benchmark and cas level two so where cas is nothing but uh, the center for internet security so uh, where we, we if it is a linux machine we will be having something like uh, cis uh, um, We, uh, we have CS Red Hat uh, um, Enterprise Linux and version number level one and version number level two. So we'll be having those details. So once we select that one, um, we just uh, save the policies. So once the policy is saved, um, so in our case, let's assume that the test two uh, is the compliance, uh, uh, the policy for our case. Then we'll go to the uh, my scans. The, then we select the new scan. So once we select the new scan, similarly, we, either we can select directly the the existing compliance, or we can go to the user defined one. So for uh, for sample case, test case, we just select this test. Um, then uh, all the details will be same. There is nothing difference when it comes to my scan. Just select the name of the scan and what is the description and what are the which folder you want to save the scan results and what is the target so either it can be ipv4 ipv6 address uh, it can be something like 10.10.10.1 if you want to mention range of ip address you can mention hyphen or if it is a different uh, ip address then you can just put comma separated so once once uh, once this is done then uh, in case if there are like a n number of multiple different targets of different subnets then we can upload that as well as a file then we, we save the the scan once the once the scan is saved we just have to start the scan and then once the scan is completed 
um so we just uh, export the report as uh, like we don't have the access to the compliance tab uh, uh, the, the the compliance policies um the, the rest of the the functionalities are same um except uh, the configuring the policy where we need to select uh, uh, the the level 1 and level 2 uh, the benchmarking item in the policies for all the the, the previous thing how we, uh, we we run the scan we configure the scan and how we export the report uh, you can do watch out the the previous video so now uh, once the compliance report is completed so we just uh, review the report so i had uh, just taken one of the uh, the working report from uh, one of the scans that we have performed recently so uh, this is the report we can see like there are like uh, a number of findings um so by default uh, when it comes to compliance the the system will perform uh, the compliance at the six uh, six levels of uh, uh, levels of the uh, six stages so when we say six stages uh, we just uh, go on one by one so the first one will be on file system so uh, so so the linux will be performing file system the uh, file system level of compliance let's say if some uh, unwanted partition is mounted then it will say like uh, uh, re remove the partition if it, the partition is no longer in use so those kind of things will be covered in the file system scan uh, file system compliance then there will be there will be services uh, uh, compliance checking so in the services compliance checking by default the linux if you if you take a linux machine so uh, most of the services will be running by default so it will just tell if, if some of the services are not required by the environment then it last to remove uh, and again like it depends on the underlying uh, software that, uh, that whether it's in use or not in use then we can, then it comes to the third point so that is uh, network configuration so we, with respect to network configuration so that will be part of the system ctl uh, if, if it is a case of linux so there it will be checking whether the unwanted parameters are uh, available or not like uh, tcp flooding or tcp sin parameter or it could be any other um, the system level kernel parameters so in those level of uh, parameters it will perform the compliance check and it will find out if any abnormal uh, configurations or settings that will that need to be enabled or disabled play like it can be a firewall settings if it, by default if firewall is enabled or disabled or it can be a c linux configured so these kind of settings then, so then uh, when it comes to the fourth point that is um, where it will be checking that is a logging and auditing so it will check whether the the proper logging and auditing is configured at the system level or not like where log secure where log messages where log audit daemon mm -hmm. so these kind of things then we have access authorization and authentication related settings so when it uh, this is with respect to pamd uh, and uh, at the last we have system maintenance so for maintenance related uh, compliance so so on these six areas mainly um the, this compliance scan will focus on it so we'll just uh, look into the report as i have masked some of the things uh, due to security reasons uh, so this is the uh, the compliance report for one of the the project that was done uh, so then it comes to the vulnerability by plugin so usually we just ignore the vulnerabilities that is reported through this uh, compliance scan so now we have two things like uh, vulnerabilities uh, sorry, uh, the, the compliance that uh, items that are failed and compliance items that are successful. So now we can see um, here, um, the, the number starting with the 1.x. So this is all related to the file system compliance. So we can see whether um, it says that ensure mounting of HFS file system is disabled. So these are the default file systems that will be present in the system. So we need to make sure that that is disabled. Similarly, we have ensure no dev optimization is set on temp partition, no uh, SUID, no execute option. Uh, set on uh, task slash temp partition so it means that the temp is uh, specifically only to store the temporary files not to provide any execute permission on the temp partition so these are the basic uh, level of set security settings that need to be uh, uh, tightened that need to be taken care so the, these will be uh, basically highlighted in the level one and uh, even in level two as well level two compliance so it's again it depends on the, uh, the the criticality of the system whether we need to apply the settings or not um, that we need to take a call based on the um, involvement and discussions with the, the backend teams and the customer team. So now um, let's just, uh, so we, we have uh, like uh, compliance failed items and we have, uh, we can see we, we have two dot X. This is with respect to services, um, services compliance. Then we have three dot X items, three dot two dot four. Uh, so this is with respect to system level parameters, so, so it, uh, network configuration. So we can, as we were saying, we can see uh, some of the kernel parameters like uh, net IPv4 conf all uh, log Martins one. So it, it says like if there uh, any, any uh, 
uh, any parameter to be disabled or enabled, IPv6 to be disabled or enabled. So these kind of networks are related settings that we take it. So when it comes to the fourth one, it is related to logging and monitoring, auditing and logging. So that will be taken care in the fourth stage. So when it comes to fifth stage, this is with respect to the access authorization and authentication. So it's all related to the SSH. Uh, then we have the sixth point. So that is with respect to the system and maintenance. So we have some of the points which got failed. So um, similarly, we have some uh, parched component items. So it means that uh, these were already placed in the uh, server that is successful. So we don't have to modify anything. So we'll just uh, look at one or two items uh, which is failed. And then maybe we can look on look at one of the successful items as well. Um, we'll just go down and we'll access the report. Uh, directly we'll jump on to the, the complaints failed items. Um, so we'll just see the, the first item. So that is ensure mounting of HFS file system is disabled. So it, it says that like, we need to ensure that this file system is disabled unless there is a use of this by any of the application that is running in the system. So it says the info, what has to be removed, and uh, it provides the solution as well, this document, what has to be done to uh, implement these changes. So it says like we need to kind of compare this file and add this entry and uh, run this command to make sure this is removed. And there is a reference as well, like uh, you know, in case if there are more queries on it. And uh, we have the audit file. So here audit file name, we can see here. Uh, this is what we will be seeing it when we are configuring the policy. Uh, CAS Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux, EL, EL means Enterprise Linux 7, server level 1. So similarly, there will be level 2 also. Uh, then we just match the host uh, uh, IP for security purpose. And then we have the commands that to be verified um, um, how to do that. So similarly, let's check out another item. So no, it says that ensure no dev option is set on temp partition. So because temp is mainly for uh, storing the temporary files, so not to perform any uh, device operations or any uh, execute operations on this partition. So similarly, um, if you look at uh, the, any one of the successful uh, uh, successfully compliant item, um, I'll just take one example. Um, So if you look at one of the past item, uh, ensure mounting of uh, cramped file system is uh, disabled. So if I just see it here, the cramped file system is compressed read only file. So it, it just gives the description and what is the reference and uh, it will state the, the policy value. So I expect pass. So so like uh, so this is the way uh, we need to uh, verify the report. Uh, when it comes to our compliance audit scan so what uh, the usually companies does is like uh, so they'll they'll perform the the compliance audit scan on the system of the of the how many ever uh, deployments are available in the in the field and then they'll take out the report for each and every server and they'll they'll and they'll not try to implement everything each and everything so it depends on the criticality um, so what what option to be um, watch point uh, which point to be enabled and which point to be disabled so, so based on that they'll take an action and uh, and again like we have a um, uh, solution for each and every uh, each and every uh, point that is being covered here so 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 based on, based on the the communication between the the product teams and multiple teams so the, the final uh, uh, the action will be taken and the, the communication will be made to the customer teams so that the the, the things can be implemented so that uh, level 1 and level 2 uh, compliance can be fulfilled um yeah so this is with respect to uh, nasus compliance audit scan and we will be coming up with uh, the cas benchmark compliance audit scan as well so which is similar to that of uh, nasus um so we'll be uh, covering up within the next video so thank you thank you once again for watching the video